Hi, welcome back to the FHCAM Annual Inspection Series. Today we're going to be talking about general inspection of the airframe structure and a little bit on the flight control system. So let's dive into the flight control system first. Something that the Corsair has that not every airplane has is different materials for all of the flight controls. Uh, some airplanes have all metal flight controls or all fabric flight controls or wood or whatever the case is. In the case of the FG1D Corsair, we actually have three different types of materials. The first being fabric. So that's one type of inspection or, or one process of inspection that the mechanics have to go through is they have to inspect the fabric. How tight is it? Are any of the seams frayed? What's it look like on the inside? Checking the structure on the inside. And on the Corsair, what we find is that the elevators, which are interchangeable left to right, which is a point of interest, uh, are fabric as well as the rudder up here. However, you notice the tabs for all of these are metal. And so we have to inspect the rudder and the elevators uh, and the fabric that's in them. If we walk over here, what you see is that the wing flaps are made of metal. You can see there's grip lock here, so it's okay to stand here and here on the aircraft. And the flaps are, the right wing flap is actually three different sections, as you can see. So that'd be a different type of inspection inside and out of the metal. Here you're checking for rivets and cracking of skins and stress uh, that have been caused during flight um, with all of the linkages. As you can see, there's big push-pull tubes, there's connection points. There's quite a lot to look at just in the wing flaps alone. One thing that not everybody knows about the Corsair as we move out to the aileron system here is that the ailerons are actually made of wood. They're not fabric or metal, they're actually wood construction with a fabric covering over the top. And that again is an entirely different inspection process. So moving back inboard on the wing here, we get to this wing flap. And one of the advantages of the flaps being in sections is that we can manipulate the outboard section alone. So because this is an actual wartime aircraft and it does have machine guns mounted in the wings, the machine guns would have to be serviced, reloaded, um, and removed as necessary. And with such a tall airplane, that could be hard. And access getting in there is hard. So not unlike the unique feature of being able to extend the wing flaps with the footstep is you are able to further extend just the outboard section to gain access to the guns for removal and loading purposes. And how you do that is open this panel here and then pause edit while I go get a pair of dykes, which I did not think to bring because we safety wire the lever. <laughs> Once we have the door open, we remove the safety wire, which prevents this from happening during flight once the handle is moved. As you can see in here, there's a red tabbed handle. And when we pull this handle, what's gonna happen is the wing flap then extends further. It locks into place there, and now you're able to approach the guns much closer, and you don't have the risk of damaging the flap while you're loading guns and ammunition into the airplane, and you have better accessibility. So like the control services being made out of several materials, the airframe follows suit. As you can see here, the wing is made primarily of metal, aluminum, and some steel incorporated here and there, but primarily aluminum. On the outboard wing sections, we're back into fabric. So the earlier model Corsairs had fabric from about where the gun bay and, and ammo bay begin outboard. And they made that out of fabric because it's lighter material, it's easier to repair, and that was just sort of the technology of the time. It also helped with the construction of the airplane a little bit. 
So with the airframe, there's several types of inspections that you have to perform. Next, we'll go inside what they call the hell hole and take a look inside of the aircraft fuselage. Typically, the access point inside of the fuselage, to get inside of the fuselage, I should say, is called the hell hole because a lot of the maintenance was done outside or in, in harsh climates. And so it was very unpleasant once you got inside there. Additionally, they're typically really small and for a, a full grown person to get in there uh, takes some sort of uh, unique contortionism at times to get inside the hell hole. So that's kind of where the name come from, comes from. So let's head inside the hell hole and check out the inside of a Corsair. So here's the hell hole of the Corsair. And as you can see, this one's actually a pretty generous sized hell hole and not too bad to get into. So during inspection, uh, you would just crawl in and get your upper body in there. And once inside, you can see a lot of the aircraft structure, of the control system, the elevator and rudder controls, the landing gear actuator, electrical components, and do all of the inspections once you get inside there. One thing that's unique to the Corsair is the ability to lower the flaps with the foot peg here. A common question with the Corsair is, how do you get up on it? Wow, it's big. Uh, how, do you, how do you know how to mount the airplane, so to speak? So as you can see, the Corsair has these massive wing flaps and the only way to get up is when these flaps are down. Well, they don't always have to be down. Sometimes the pilot will approach the airplane and the wing flaps will be up. So then how do you get on the airplane? Well, Chance Vought, when they designed the airplane, put this neat little feature in the footstep here. And when the flaps are up, if you push the footstep, it releases the pressure. And as you can see, the wing flaps then extend, giving you the ability to take the first step right here in this hole in the flaps to get inside the cockpit. So here we are in the cockpit and we'll talk about the cockpit inspection just a little bit. Inside the cockpit, what you need to look at is a whole lot. There's a lot of instruments, controls, hydraulics, fuel, uh, all kinds of systems, radios, electrical, everything kind of comes together in the cockpit because this is the command center, if you will. So there's a lot to look at, a lot to inspect inside here. Another neat feature of the Corsair, and I should be specific, the early model Corsairs up until the Dash 4 series, is that you notice if you look down here at the rudder pedals, there's no floor. There's completely, there is a completely wide open advantage to get in for inspection and maintenance. It made it less comfortable, I think, for the pilots uh, not having sort of a floor there. And uh, probably the worst thing about not having a floor is as you're flying along, if you ever drop your ink pen, well, you can forget about saving it. Last thing I'd like to point out as far as inspection and material construction on this Corsair airplane is the fact that there's a lot of spot welds during the construction. Most airplanes like the P-51 Mustang and, and other American fighters of its day were put together using rivets. And this airplane uses a lot of spot welds. Rivets where you have to join major components together. But as you can see here on the center section, this row is all spot welds all the way across. And so that causes you to employ a different type of inspection, just as important as inspecting rivets or any other type of, of fastener. So here we see the center section. And then if you look down the fuselage, you can also see that most of the skins on the side of the fuselage are spot welded together as a structure. So thanks for joining the airframe and flight control portion of our annual inspection series. And we'll see you next time.